阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥。Day everyone. Um, today we will continue with our weekly Tai Shan Gan Ying Pian Treatise on Response and Retribution. Today we are in part thirteen. Ah,、uh, congratulations, made it that far. Ah,、uh, this is the fifty fifth class. So yeah, you know, a little bit by little bit, we're getting through the whole book. Hopefully, we have a proper review on you know everything and. And I、uh, will, you know, put it to practice as we go. So today we're talking about unscrupulous behaviors, or in a simpler word, it should be、um, reckless behavior without care about the consequences, without care about others. You do what you want because you, you know, you like it, and you know, not thinking about whether it actually harms others、uh, in all aspects. So. In this clause, we talk about instead of reflecting on one's conduct or amassing merits to earn blessings, one turns the assigned blame for misfortune on nature, other people, and fate. You and Tian Yu Ren hear from mine. Basically, you blaming everyone else except ourselves, or reflecting ourselves in a situation that are、um, adverse. You know, like it's always you know transports fault,、uh, trains fault. My wife's fault, my、uh, you know, my daughter's fault, my my boss's fault. But the only person that、uh, is always free from you know making mistake is yourself. So that's of course it's um it's a it's an attitude that no one likes you know and uh, uh, does not help in our development. So when we understand this. We will understand that you know how do we get what we want because all this arises from not getting what you want, or all this coming out from nothing goes well in this world. But the fact the fact is this world is not going. Nothing goes well in this world is a very common occurrence that happens not just to you but to every almost everyone. You know, no matter what position they are in, there is always things that doesn't go their way, and and we have to learn to live with that. This is an imperfect world, you know. Buddhism we mention this world as saha. Saha means imperfection, lacking, insufficient. Something's missing.、Uh, saha is a Sanskrit word for it. You know, it means mis-、uh, lacking. So this, this is why you know, no matter what culture you are, it's an observation, right? A reality、uh, in our world, we always lack something, you know. Uh, nothing ever like nothing will go according to your plan. Not nothing. Sorry,、uh, there is we can't expect hundred percent to go according to our wishes, and we must understand、uh, the cause and effect behind this、uh, phenomenon. Right, these symptoms. You know, why is everything going against uh, what uh, you know what we wish for because of the the deeds that we did in the past. You know, collectively, individually. Of course,、um, some people have an easier path than others. Some people have a way harder starting point when they're young and all that. They have to work, struggle, just to get you know, a living. You know, just get a comfortable life. Some people are just born into it, and this inequality is、um, reflecting of a different deeds and. You know, action and thoughts were that was committed in the past, right? Nothing comes into being just like that. And、um, once we understand that, we will learn first to settle our mind. You know, instead of trying, you know, instinctively jumping to, you know, blaming others and overly defensive, we learn how to improve ourselves in these circumstances. And that is the way out of. Your current situation, you know there are situation where you know、um, some people just can't take it. humiliation. You know, work as a waiter and stuff like that, and、uh, 
um, you know, it's, it's, it's a tough customer and stuff. Some people learn how to interact better every time they, uh, you know, encounter difficult customers. They, they build up their knowledge, they build up how to read people properly and eventually becomes a source of wealth. You know, if you use it as a, as a chance for you to level up, basically, you know, level up the skills. That means you put your ego aside, you actually pick up as much as you can in your current situation. You know, no matter what field you have, even as a homeless, there's a skill to be a very comfortable homeless people. I don't know how to say that. It's a very, um, uh, no mean of saying that it, it, it is comfortable being homeless. It is not, but um, even as beggar, even as people who have, you know, have a very low material comfort in their lives, uh, lacking, they still have a way, path among them to, to, to get by day to day let alone, you know, everything else in the world. There's a path to everything, so to speak. And for us, we want to summarize it into um, one word, giving. Giving is the step number one to accumulate our merits and fortunes. If um, things don't go our well, we understand that our merit is not enough. Uh, Merit's not enough because we, our action is not pure. And kind, our deed is not uh, pure and kind. Our thought is not pure and kind. Our speech is not pure and kind. We um, put ourselves too much over um, others, and that's the reason why we have very um, insufficient fortunes. And once we understand, you know, like what this um, text teaching us from Tai Shan Gan Yin Right, treaties and respond retribution. It's not. All, it's not all about punishments or who's bad. It's also about, you know, how to avoid this. You know, instead, how do you turn it around? How do you go and, you know, positively do something about it? You know, like instead of you know these pitfalls, how do you turn it around? Make it a, 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 a opportunity to grow your more merits and fortunes. And number one is always giving. If you give, you will get. That is the iron rule. Everything is about giving. And if we talk about giving, we can talk about, we mentioned it last week, right? It's not just, you know, like give money to others. That's very small part of giving. Sometimes you just give them a assuring laugh, assuring smile, give them, you know, your time to listen to them. Those are simple stuff. And those are giving as well. And the result, you have a better relationships. Uh, you have a more um, open, or to say, your heart is more at ease. Their heart is at ease because you give them fearlessness. Uh, there are many kind of giving, and we can categorize into three: the, the giving of wealth, and giving of um, wisdom, giving of you know, knowledge, you know, your insight. Or maybe you've been you know, dealing with a certain field of profession for twenty years, and you share it with people, you know, without asking for any compensation because you want to benefit people. So that's giving. <coughs> or maybe you lead, you help the men, the newcomers to settle in their role. You know, provide your time and effort to coach them. So those are giving of knowledge. In turn, you get better because you reiterate the, what you learn, what you know on a third person perspective when you say to them, Sometimes their feedback might even help you to improve because they have a fresher perspective on things. So that's, those, those are, uh, how to say, those are the iron rule. You know, the more you give, the more you get because you connect to more people as you go. Uh, it's hard when you're so comfortable in the shell, speaking for myself, uh, when you are so used to this kind of manners, you know, shutting out yourself easily, it's, um, how to say, it's not wrong to have peace and quiet, but we also need to learn to give a little bit uh, as we go. And the more you give, the more, how to say, open you will feel, and the more, how to say, positive um, uh, emotions and stuff like that will come back. So the last one is the gift of fearlessness. 
as I mentioned, like, you know, give them a reassuring smile, give them a comforting, you know, words, expressions, just being there as well, you know, uh, trust the friends. So those are gifts of fearlessness. And if someone's panicking, you give them assurance, give them a very sound, logical rundown so that they know what they're handling properly. Um, so giving of wealth has two types. Right? One is giving your time and effort. Those are, we call it the internal wealth. You know, time is wealth. Your time is the most uh, precious thing you ever have in this world. Because with time, everything can come into fruition or undoing. Depends on what you did. Uh, if time is uh, anything else, uh, we can, you know, we, 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 we exchange time for money in a sense. You work, you spend your time, eight hours, nine hours, you got money in return. So those are internal wealth. The external wealth obviously is the uh, materials, you know, that you help. You know, the, you know, maybe you go to Salvation Army and donate some furniture or donate to one of those charities using your bank account. Those things are giving of wealth. So why do we talk about this? Because those are procedures so to speak, to make it easier for us to learn how to build our merits and fortunes. Without merits and fortunes, it's very hard to do anything else effectively. You know, you need this, or in modern terms, we can say capital to start <coughs> growing you know, your merits and fortunes. Obviously, this is not in the term of transactional mindset, not like I give, I want to get. If that mindset is there, it's discounted because it's not coming out of your heart. Uh, not to be confused with the, you know, this financial transaction. Um, this is just, you know, you're just serving other people. You actually uh, want to serve other people you know, in your own place, in your own way, right? You put your effort, you put it up there, out there, let people benefit from it. That is giving you don't ask for anything else, but you know, getting better as you go, as you do it. So number one is giving. What about number two? Number two is withholding from unwholesome conduct or precepts. Because if you just say precepts, you know what, what it means. Precepts means self-restraint. You know, you know, you have to self-restraint from you know things that will harm you, your mind, your body. You know, your speech, you know, and the most basics are the five precepts that Buddha laid out. You know, if you want to be, you know, living well in the human world, society, first you have to refrain from harming others, no killing. You have to refrain from uh, sexual misconduct as well. You know, no breaking up people's family relationship uh, for peace of mind as well. And then number three is no. Um, stealing, you know, people's property, people spend hard work to accumulate and steal it away, disempowering them. And then you also talk about, uh, we also talk about the um, no lying. And in the 10 virtuous deeds that Buddha laid out, it's, you know, expanded for five precepts or the other way around. Um, the, the, the 10 virtuous deeds, Sasagi Tao, um, the no lying can be break up into form, right? This is about what we speak in our mouth, you know, what what speech we're giving. So the first one is no lying, of course, be honest, you know, don't say one thing in front of others and do another in the back. That's the basic of trust. And then, um, and then we have no swearing, you know, no harsh words, words that are really hurtful. You know, there has no benefit other than harming other people. You know, you may have a very, um, you know, charge up emotions, but always, you know, keep a rein on your mouth because it's very, keep a rein on our mouth because it's very dangerous. Once the word has been um, uttered, it's very hard to pull back. Uh, it does, it's only one way road. You know, there's no unsent like our message. Or anything it, it drops into their memory they will remember it forever so yeah no harsh words no 
um, you know, and you know, this sentence is all about how do we get what we want, and we recognize we can't get it straight away, and we shouldn't um, be eagerly want to, you know, uh, expect things just turn out your way. You know, those things form over time and so does your merit and fortune you, it, it takes time to accumulate you must be persistent you must continue to do it so we talk about the stages to accumulate our merits and fortune the first one is giving all right giving of wealth internal external giving of fearlessness uh, giving of um, you know wide wisdom or knowledge and then we talk about restraining ourselves from harming others and the uh, obvious physical harm, you know, the sexual misconduct is also a form of harm, harming your, um, harming your peace of mind, harming other people's family or relationships. And then the um, stealing is harming people's property, you know, harming people's, uh, taking people's property that is not yours. You know. And now we talk about the, the no lying. And this no lying can refers to, you know, this honest, conduct, you know, everything you say is not out of your heart, it's always one thing in front the other, you do, you say about one thing and then you do entirely opposite stuff behind the back, and the trust is destroyed that way trust is very important, right it's a currency for us to um, stand firm in this society if you lost the trust you lost basically the ground that you stand upon you know, to build something in marriage and fortunes. That's very important. And I want to emphasize also on the four um, speech-related uh, deeds, you know, speech-related conduct you know, mentioned by the Buddha, because we're talking about restraining ourselves from, you know, harming our, from harming others, which will taint our marriage and fortune, right? So the four speech karma, you know, the four speech act, cause and effect. One is lying, and there are big lying. We're talking about you are not Buddha yet, attaining Buddha yet, and then you claim you're a Buddha, trying to gain some fame, some money. You know, I I am the come again, I'm the Bodhisattva come again. You know, those are common. You know, we see a lot of people trying to scam people like that. Real real Buddha come again do not do this kind of thing. They do their job, when it's time, maybe by accidents or by chance, they discover and then they disappear. They will pass away, basically. They will not stay here and for you to worship them. Because that's not their point, right? They have full, full uh, almost perfect or perfect merits and fortune. They don't need that. They're here to save us. So back to the more day-to-day -day one is the um, lying of you know, untruthful speech. And then the second one is the harsh words, you know, swear words, or maybe more accurately refers to words that actually meant to harm them, <coughs> that really, really, really meant to harm others, you know, those that step on their red line, you know, that you know, dig out their their hurt, uh, their shameful or the part they they felt shameful, and keep emphasizing on them, you know, basically word they are so formed solely for the purpose of harming others. So those are harsh words. Of course, we talk about swear words and stuff like that, uh, which is also very good for, uh, which is also very, uh, should be cautious about, uh, you know, so that we don't create too much negative karma on this. Um, and then what? And then we have the um, qi, yu. qi yu in Chinese, like it's in, in English is, Words that are this um, disingenuine. It's not much of a lie, but more of a you know you are not genuine about your praise or anything. You're not you're not wrong, but what what you say is all flowery and unsubstantial. So it's a very disingenuine um, speech. You know you you might flatter people unnecessarily, stroke their egos and all that, trying to get something out in return. Mostly, that's why people do that, right? Um, or just habits of, you know, trying to exaggerate stuff, you know, make things bigger than what it seems to be, make some negative news bigger than what it's supposed to be, <coughs> twisting the plots. 
around so that people felt, you know, were confused by your um, speech, your information through your speech. The last one is the, uh, you know, Wang Yu, yeah, the double, double, uh, double tongue, double tongue. Causing conflict between two parties. Uh, I forgot the phrase for that. Um, basically, you're trying to, you know, plant some corn and pickles against two parties or more so that you can create chaos. It means you benefit yourself, or sometimes some people are just shrug and throat, which love seeing things falling apart. We compete to our Chinese word. Uh, men, you know, shrug and throat. Always like to see things falling apart, you know, chaotic. And savers in people's chaotic um, relationship. Basically, you like to see people fight and have trouble. So those are not normal conduct. The last one is um, the last of the five precepts, right? Is no intoxicants, and we we see how drugs did to people, you know, how alcohol did to people, poisonings, right? One might argue even cigarettes as well, like. CGs might be you know, help to relieve the pressure, but then it's harming others as well. So you never see a bang blue CGs. You know? never see a bang blue a smoke. A proper one, they, they don't do that because it's smelly and it's harming others. So, and then we have number three, there are six in total. The patients, able to withstand humiliation, able to be patient. In general, patience. First one is giving, second one is precepts, which is restrain our Restrain from harming, refrain from harming. Number three is to be patient. With patience, you know, we need to take in all factors, you know, all circumstances and put your mind on the path you want to achieve, no matter what happened. And then number four is diligence. Always reflect, always attempt to change it. No matter how small the progress, you always consistently put in the effort. And then eventually, number five, which is uh, able to hold yourself together. We call it tra meditative tranquility, but those are not hitting close to heart yet, right? Those are just terms. What, what does it mean? It means you can hold yourself together. You're not swayed, unmovable, unswayable by uh, distractions. So undistracted mind, basically. You understand what is right, what is wrong, you went, you know what you should be doing, what you should not be doing, right? And 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 you carry yourself forward firmly. Last one, eventually you will lead to wisdom, right? Those are the source of all um, merits and fortunes. Because with wisdom, you know everything clearly, you know, the sequence, the step-by-steps, the nature of things, the nature of the situations. So it's especially treasured in this kind of complex, big, complex global society, right? You have so much things going on. Wisdom is uh, very much sought after. Without wisdom, you know, too many problems happening. But this takes time. We need to build up that foundation. And if we look at the first six, first five, you know, those are all actions. Those are accumulative. Right. You're, you're giving, the more you give, the more you get, the more you get, the more you give. You know, the more you know, the more you share, the more you share, the more you know. And, um, you know, once you perfected it, your wisdom will perfect as well. Because you're able to, you can in contact with so many facets of your life. And this is how you solidly built the foundation of your merits and fortune day by day truthfully you know and every time every place when you saw someone in troubles if we have you know we can afford to do that no matter how small the effort is we we'll do our best to help them and when we help them we always make sure that we do not ask for anything in return and only that our giving is perfected so does the perfection of other four deeds. Uh, those are step by step to trying to help us to, you know, uh, work, you know, uh, trying to give us an idea how do we build up, you know, our life uh, so that.
that we don't end up creating more misfortune to ourselves by blaming others. Yeah. And remember a person who can take take you know leap forward into their life stages are usually one who can take a lot of pre pressure you know, pressure from life those things are not going their way those obstacles those humiliations those troubles and they were able to you know hold it together despite you know the situation many people will say ah you should give up you shouldn't you know, do this there's no hope in this but there's um, this person who succeeded will usually understand you know, you know they need to take it in uh, more than others before they can take a big leap forward um, when you look at you know like all the stages all the successful people and uh, the way they um, you know encounter unpleasant situations they don't usually muttered you know, yap and complain you know this fold that fold they usually you know do their part you know step by step you know, holding what they can together you know, holding their fault together like if I'm a mom my job is to you know begging arms meditate give sermons no matter what they uh, did to us like there is a situation where um, like Buddha was caught up in a siege, you know, between two countries. They are having wars. Buddha doesn't have food because he was locked, kind of like a lockdown without food or drought. I forgot. There's a story where Buddha is hungry, like he he went without food for days. The all they have is like leftovers, rice with water, you know, washed out porridge, basically. It's uh, very uh, dire the situation. I think he has to end up eating horse grain. Did I mix up Confucius with Buddha? I think that may be. But these two sages, they do have to encounter this big situation that will even threaten their life. And obviously, they do not complain. They do not try to, you know, give a political discourse and this and that, this and that. It is happening. It is what happened. And he's just trying to get by with his students, you know, continue their day, you know, no matter how tough it is. Uh, and they accept their fate if they are to perish there. Right? Where we may see we may say, oh yeah, Buddha is perfectly enlightened and why he won't pass away like that. But try to get stuff for weeks and sit there and say that word again. No. Like we we need to understand that situation. It's really hard. It's really tough and it takes a very deep level of patience and uh, very clear, piercing clear uh, wisdom to understand why this happens. You know, some of us, most of us might not be able to see past life, but we know there got to be something in the past life we have done that caused us to starve for months, right? And Buddha did have a past life where he actually cause I think starvation or something um, on others and he was not the main perpetrator but he was very, in past life he was involved in it and hence he has to suffer from this starving situation even though he's a Buddha so even Buddha has to face that so so do us tribulations you know trials um, so take it you know as a chance to overcome uh, our limits and only then you can say I actually able to move forward leap forward um, before leap forward there will always be setbacks and the setbacks is always testing how much can you take it if you can't take much you can't hold on to this for long success or enlightenment um, why do we say blaming misfortune on nature as a unwholesome deed 
there's a trans- tr- transgression, right? Oh, bushfire, dry. Uh, we know it's global warming made by humans, right? Those things are already like common, you know, knowledge, you know, common sense. And because of that, we have even better understanding that everything we face here, you know, disasters, this unbalanced ecosystem is because of ourselves, our action, our thought, right? Our action came out from our thought, our speech. So if a person knows how this works, you know, all phenomena is arise from the heart. And this is a very uh, short sentence for a very deep, insightful teachings from the Buddha, from the Enlightenment, you know, all phenomena, each of our using Jiangsen, right? all the phenomena arise from the heart. Uh, now we understand, um, so does this disasters happen that, encounter, that we encounter in our life. And we understand that if we follow the Buddha standard, right, not the worldly standard, Buddha standard. We want to be enlightened, to be a sage. We also we cannot leave one word behind, which is respect, utmost respect. The utmost sincerity is utmost respect. So sincerity and respect, these two words. Without sincerity, that means one-hearted. You know, respect, which means you put others, you know, first. You, know, you, you give them respect. Then there is no Buddhahood, there is no enlightenment, there is no liberation. Um, not even the people who attain, achieve, right, pursue this kind of sagehood. Also, normal people in the ancient times, like in Chinese folk society, they um, can be out of. As long as some people came across the books, the, the teachings, the classics, Du Su people who actually read the classics, understand the meaning behind it, they will always, you know, be extra careful in their attires, in their speech, in their thoughts, every time there is a disaster outside, because all family, you know, arise from the mind. Um, you know, our heart and mind, you know, interchangeably used, uh, will give rise to thousands of situations, right? Not just psychology, but also bigger ones. Right, like physical phenomena, because everything is derived from our intention. So we need to purify the source before we can um, think about all this, you know, external stuff to overcome it. All right. So so now knowing this, every time we encounter disasters. We must always be respectful, we must always bring out our utmost sincerity in front of it, instead of bearing grudge, angry against wind, against fire. You know, those are part of the world and it happens you know, because of a chain of events. You know, it does not happen on its own. And the mindset is important. You know, you do whatever you need to do, like Recently, uh, there's a Hawaii, Hawaiian fire, bush fire, right? The negligence uh, or stuff like that, I don't know, but it's unfortunate already. You know, people are trying to do the best to make living out of it to, to, to survive this, right? So the mindset should, actually it's not that bad. We always see a lot of people suddenly become much more kinder in the face of disasters. You know, we've seen a lot of flocks of donation, flocks of help assistance, you know, going to the front line, actually trying to pull people out of the debris, you know, people are more compassionate you know, in front of that system. So, even though that system is bad, but it is also a way to bring us together, the teachers, you know, how to live with each other properly. So, it is a teacher in its way, and hence worthy of respect, right? Of course, we want to avoid disasters. But we must understand in front of disasters, right? No one is high and mighty. No one is low and um, unworthy. Everyone is equal in front of disasters. And 
and that makes us humbled in front of it. And humbled mindset is a mindset of sincerity and respect. You know, you put people first. You don't put yourself first, right? And if you're sincere, you, know, you everything you do go out, come out from your heart. You will not twisting around. Of course, the outside situation will not be twisted around as well. Um, because this is a very complex environment, we can't have a you know very unified situation. Everyone has different karmas, and different karmas incur different results. Different deeds incur different acts. Right? You can't expect someone else who um, did not plant the seeds, did not water the seeds. Compared to someone who plant the seeds, barely water the seeds. Compared to someone who plant the seeds, water the seeds a lot, take good good care of it. These three person, for example, will have different results. Right? It's because of the effort of the conditions. So our job is to make sure we're aware of this and do our best. You know, every time is a test. Every time you encounter a situation that not to your liking, is a test. Am I giving rise to anger? Yes. I'm giving rise to anger, you know, like in this case, the sickness. Why am I getting sick? You know, this is because I am not controlling my sleeping habit properly. You know, incessant enjoyment, indulgence. So those things is to remind you, to humble you, to make yourself, you know, really think about what you did, and hopefully you can change as you do. And um, yeah. So bad things are not necessarily bad. Good things are not necessarily good. Basically, what the CCC I'm saying is the uh, very important clause from I Ching. I think means that, uh, maybe I didn't say it properly, but um, it means that the um, disasters always have a hidden blessing, you know, blessing in disguise. And the so-called blessings that we receive we always have disaster in disguise. Depends on how we put ourselves in front of it. Are we humble? Are we arrogant? If we're arrogant, if we let think of our God, that means conduct is reckless, as the title mentioned, unscrupulous, reckless, then of course we'll create disasters. People disaster, natural disaster doesn't matter. It's, it's effect. The cause is us. All right, let's move on. To cause and facilitate lawsuits and contention in order to obtain gain. Okay. To join unlawful gangs and organization. The first one basically means not just lawsuits. It just like to argue. People like to argue. Uh, of course, this refers to more specific to you know lawsuits but it can be uh, coming out from you know always like to confront people um, when you saw someone with you know arguments between two parties we should always help them to resolve it peacefully so reach an agreement uh, not try to exacerbate exacerbate uh, the situation, you know, exacerbate the situation, make it worse. That's the last thing we should be doing. Um, whether it be, you know, arguing over properties, inheritance, power, in the organization, or fame, compensation. So many things to be argued about, right? And this happens, you know, not just in family as well. In, in, in any organization, including the religious organization, that's supposed to be letting go of the attachment to the worldly materials. It becomes a hot spot for argument. Um, you know, like this is reading from Master Chico, right? He's he's seen a lot of arguments between you know practitioners, you know, even a monk or something. It kind of fought, you can't you can avoid it as well. People try to fight over the rights and properties, you know, to be over the temple. This is very unfortunate, you know, especially in the Buddhist context. When you look at our founder, Shabuni Buddha, went out from palace, lived under a tree, and 
he lives like that for 60 years, right? Occasionally invited to Vihara, which is the residence for, you know, for Buddha and the monks. But most of the time he's outside, right? And look at what it has twisted into. That, that alone is shameful enough. Even death is, cannot resolve this. This is a karmic offense. It's, it's very serious. Avicii hell level serious. Poor person. One of the five uh, utmost treacherous deeds, an unforgivable deed. Even Buddha who appear in this world, trying to pull you out, you can't. So this is how serious it is. So we always fight over something, you know, apparently beneficial, but it end up with more cost to cover. You know, you lost it, you know, needs money, everything needs money. Sometimes it's because it's unfair and all that. So in a in a lay person, understandable, you know. Of, of course, we always try to settle outside the court, trying to make sure we all have agreement. Uh, even, you know, the court did say it's an expensive process. You should settle outside the court if you can. You know, don't have to go through all these legal battles. Let alone, you know, people who all, uh, become priests, monks, they should be, right? They should be. This is very bad. So our point is trying to learn how to unify people, not divide people. Um, in Buddhism, yeah, like I mentioned, one of the five uh, most uh, treacherous deeds is breaking up a Sangha, right? It doesn't matter whether it is a proper Sangha where you actually have more than four people practicing Buddha earnestly, you know, being very good role model, and they actually practice the precepts and giving some words and stuff. Whether they are or they are not, doesn't matter, right? We should not interfere. Just like, um, if, of course, if it's a very good Sangha, you know, four practitioners plus or more actually follow the teachings of the Buddha or teaching of a master, and they actually help a lot of people by being a good influence, a, a, a qing liu, a, 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 a stream of conscience in this society they should be protected at all costs, not the other way around, right? That's how we call it, Dhamma protected, we should protect it. We should make it better, bigger. But of course, even they are not following according to the Buddha's teaching, they only have a name as a monk by not actually practicing. It's not our job to enforce on them. Just like police is, you know, given the authority to enforce on unlawful citizens, un, you know, unlawful Dharma practitioners, in lawful in terms of Buddha's law, you know, the precepts, uh, it will be taken care of by either their Sangha, their own group, or the Dharma protector. There will be a way to take care of it. Our job is to uh, not harm the image any further of the Dharma. So this, we need to be, um, how do I say, focus on the good one. Stop promoting the bad one. You know, by spreading it again, you actually spreading the negative image of Dharma. You're not helping the propagation of Dharma, which means you're not helping more people to reach liberation from six dreams. You're just making them more disillusioned and more discouraged. Oh, look at this. Look at that. You know, they're all scam and fraud. They already know. You know, they are not fools. They, they can see that this person is not doing proper. The, 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 the job we should be doing is to bring out, but look at this. You know, look at Pastor Chingpo. Look at Hai Tao Fasa. Look at those good, good venerables. You know, look at all these good monk. What, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 60 years. You know, Mung Chan Lao Ho Sang. All these good examples. You know, venerable Mung Chan, venerable Gua Hua. All these good monks. You know, examples that brings the Sangha into this proper status, you know, as a teacher of heaven and human. This is something we should be doing, spreading good examples. Bad examples are everywhere. You don't need to tell them. 
they all know. Just go to one place, they will see this and that. It's none of our business. Everyone's karma is everyone's own business. Our business is to make sure we are accumulating merits and fortunes, not just for ourselves, for others. If they turn around and say, hey, but these are good people, they actually help, and they actually have a sense of respect, they understand that this is not Buddhism. This might be people bearing the name of Buddhism. Same goes for Christianity and other religions. Now, some extremists and stuff like that doing terrible stuff. But when you focus on someone who is actually contributing, you know, take out all their savings and actually serving in their communities, these are the spot of enlightenment, of light, humanity that we should cherish and protect. Right? We should protect this. This is how we become that protector. Right? What? Well, how do you protect it? To spread it, spread the word. If this is a good conduct, it actually helps people share it. All right. So back to our Buddhist sangha. You know, in the in the Dao Chang, right? Um, in the Dharma place, if you want to benefit people. Um, you know, we need to protect the day-to-day operations, uh, make it smooth, make it workable, and whoever has talent in whatever departments, you know, put to use so that they can extend the benefit to most people. You know, if you're good at singing, you become way known. If you're good at um, craft cooking, you become the xiangqi, which is the, the department where you take care of cooking. We don't take care of the singing services. Uh, if you're good at, you know, understanding the Dharma, you should take care of, you should learn, you know, give you an opportunity to deepen the teachings you know, more than others, so that you can give the talk, share what you found. So this is, this is how you protect the Dharma, which means protecting the chance for people to get enlightened. Right. And this is only not only benefiting human realms, it benefited a lot, countless, of a, a, a hungry ghost realm. You know, those spiritual realms. Whether we um, see them or not, doesn't matter. You know, they are there. And uh, uh, very important. So, yeah. <clears throat> All right. Whole point, you know, if you learn how to live with, um, you know, if you if you know what actually happens in this world, you know, all these fighting conflicts, they're all over a piece of land, a piece of property, a piece of estates. They're valuable, they're enjoyable, but they're also very much cause of conflict. And, you know, when we understand that this kind of conflict already leads to more hatred, you know, uh, hatred and um, less peace of mind, you know, even you call it, you always be guarding against someone else who get you back. You always be doubtful, guard. Even you eliminate all your enemies, your own children, your own son, daughter-in-law, son-in-law, see, family. Cause and effect, right? So, do you actually win in the end? Or do you actually lose even more? Something you can think about. Look at the history. You know, look at all this Chinese history I read. Uh, I love a lot of Chinese history. Those emperors they have great achievements, but how much hate have to roll in order for them to sit on that throne? The slightly good one will try to amend, but most cases they either, you know, take down, you know, point their knife towards their ex staff that help them to get into the throne, right? creating more hatred. So what is that kind of glorious? Nothing glory about that. That's why Buddha no longer wants to be a king. This is not. He doesn't have to go to that because he has. Everyone already say that's him. But the problem is it's not helping. It's not helping thoroughly. You can all you can only help that part, India. That's it. Right? Like look at the biggest empire of the world, Mongolia. How many hates have to roll? 
properly burned, people have the room not to get there. Yeah. Think about it and think about all these fights and conflicts that we understand that what we must fight for is not those goals and estates. Those things are important. You know, we should have a foundation on that. You know, even in Buddhism, we need land to build a place, but we need to put it in the right place. Those land and properties, there are tools they are used to create even more merits and fortunes. They shouldn't be the cause of your downfall. It shouldn't be the end itself. It's a mean. And if you can, if you have that much merits, you will get that much resources to do stuff. And if you do it earnestly out of your heart without trying to get anything in return, but only to see people actually benefit from that, your marriage and fortune will definitely increase multifold by itself. You know, first thing is your peace of mind has attained. You're fearless. You know, you will fear death. You did nothing wrong by others. That is the utmost freedom one can enjoy. Right? In day to day here is only, you know, to stay to help people. When time's up, you go to pure land. Time's up, you go to heaven. Pure land. Right? No, okay, it's pure land and become Buddha. So how, you know, like, once we actually start sinking and use that as a conduct, then we'll be able to, we'll see ourselves be more willing to let go of these kind of fights. But everyone's rushing towards, like a headless chicken, towards that one direction of destructions, of endless bickering, endless argument. That means they lost their peace of mind. Without peace of mind, you cannot attain tranquility. Without tranquility, you cannot attain wisdom. Without wisdom, you cannot see through everything as you can't let go because you're getting trapped in this rat race. All right? So, if you want fame, I give you fame. That means you, know, you want number one, I become number two. I don't care. As long as I can serve the organization good enough. You can be number one, take charge. I can help you from behind as long as you're benefiting the organization. That's the level of boundless heart one need to have. If you want more profit, I'll give you more profit. Right? Because for me, these are only used to create more wealth for more people. Right? To help them. So what you want, I give you. This is how you become Bodhisattva. This is how Bodhisattva practice these six stages of accumulating merits and fortune. We call it Pusim, the Bolomi, the Prashna Paramita. Paramita of giving, that means perfection of giving, and the other five. They are. So these six steps, giving, precepts, you know, refraining from harming, number two, um, patience, you know, diligence, um, or consistency diligence, uh, I don't want to use meditation but it is very technical uh, able to hold yourself together you know able to be unswayed by distraction and the last one is wisdom perfection of wisdom so wisdom is very broad so how do we make it into day to day stuff the six uh, <coughs> six six liu du liu du zhe jie liu du all right, satparamita. All right, that means the six kind of um, oh, okay, the six way to get to nirvana. You do, ma do. All right, uh, satparamita. Yep, six path. You can treat it as stages, but it's actually one thing together. Uh, if you reach that level, but when you practice one by one, right, stage by stage, once you get to the mastery level. You can do six at once. The giving is also the wisdom. You, you, the way you give is a presentation of ultimate wisdom. The way you hold yourself, conduct yourself, which is number two, the refrain from harm, non, non-harming. But the way you conduct yourself, precepts. Precepts is meant for body, your action. People will see the inkling of wisdom from your action. The way you, you know, put in efforts, 
consistently, step by step, makes people have confidence in attaining wisdom. They were like, oh, you actually do this very mundane thing every day. Just give a little, just help a little, just do a little, step by step you build up. You know? And then eventually, when you encounter a situation, you are moved. You're no longer blaming other people, fighting, bickering. That is, you know, mentally tranquility. You're able to hold yourself together and sweat, able to discern what is right and wrong, right? And then you'll be patient, yes. It's very important, patient. Without patience, uh, you'll fall apart. Everything you work hard, you know, of giving, or and, and, and your conduct, but if you have no patience, you know, of other people's humiliation or stuff like that, you will fall apart. You just have to start again. So, all right. So it's the six uh, ways to gain enlightenment, basically. Six paths to enlightenment. All right, so I think I'll stop here. Um, what about next half? Uh, that's very, very... Let's talk about the second half next week. This is quite uh, deep. A lawful gangster organization. It, it goes beyond that. It's not just gangsters, Yakuza. It's all about the crowd you're with. You know, the people you're with. It also has important influence on us. It also talks about the influence we have under you know, the TV we watch, the media we consume, the um, topics, you know, the, 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 the company that we are with. These are very important because if we want to build up our life properly, you know, we need to pick the right company. You know, that includes what we see, what we consume as well. Leave it for next week. All right. Thank you for coming, guys. Uh, anything to share before we end this? Ah, me, to, for. 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 Ah, me. May the merits and virtues adorn the Buddha's pure land, repay the four kinds of kindness above, and relieve the sufferings of those in the three paths below. May those who see and hear of this all bring forth the heart of understanding and compassion, and leave the teaching for the rest of this life. Then be born together in the land of ultimate bliss. Amen. Good night, everyone. Good morning. Good night, Hal. See ya.